I know myself 100% as sovereign energy and know it in my gut, same as I know I know how to tie my shoes. And that sensation begins and a signal is completed and I begin to magnetize. Welcome to the podcast. Um, let's start off by introducing yourself and just give us a little bit of backstory leading up to your near-death experience, if you're comfortable sharing that. Sure. Um, well, I would say um, it started when I was four. I was riding my big wheel, a small plastic tricycle, for those of you who don't know. And I was about to cross the street. My brother was calling me. We were going to go to the mall. And I went down the street in between two parked cars. Down the street was coming another car driving, a woman who was drinking. So I went down, collided with the car, went underneath the car, and the car kept going uh, another 20, 30 feet until people could stop her and tell her what happened. So during that time, I just remember a blur going down, and then it faded to black. And then it opened up again. And I was sitting on what I thought was a person. So I'm, I'm leaning to one side on person. For what I think is a person. Uh, my head is down. And the first thing I do is I open my eyes. So I'm seeing, you know, the, the floor. And I see like hair out of the corner of my eye. Long, white, silvery hair. I see the bottom of whoever this is. Like a robe is the best way I I could describe it and when I turned to look to see who is this you know what happened I figured I was just waking up that's what it felt like um it was a being a hooded being with no face they only had light so they were made totally out of light and I'm just staring at the face for a second here thinking um then I asked them what happened they said you were in an accident everything's going to be all right um and I'm staring at this being's face, and I remember thinking um, that we were talking without using our mouths, that there were some differences in what I was experiencing to what I was used to. Um, so as I'm staring at this being's face, I'm being pulled closer and closer, and I start to see what I would think to be what we would say heaven is, you know, um, beautiful colors that we've never seen before they were alive there were children elderly and it was just a feeling that hit me and i knew everything was one i knew you know religion was man-made that it was just dividing the uh bandwidth of god if you will or creator um dividing that that love and that power and I wanted to go there and, and, you know, they told me it wasn't my time. They had other things to show me, put my head down. Everything was going to be all right. And the next thing I know is I'm pulled into this other scene where it's like, I'm in what I could describe as like, it's like a blueprint. Okay. It's like lines everywhere and everything's connected just like a blueprint would be on graph paper. And I could see through things and they said, this is the quantum field and this is the the foundation that you the humans build their reality off of from their thought that gets seeded into their heart and then is expressed to the field and cycles back through their system. This is how you interpret what's solid, what's not, um, what's vibrating at different frequencies, what grants you your spiritual and emotional experience. And all these other things. Um, and then they talk about spending energy, how we spend. We come into the world as a pure condensed beam of love, and then we spend this energy. And that we can call all, all of this back into the moment of now. And they explained ascension, you know, that this was important for the evolution of humanity. And that we can do our life review now by simply knowing and I mean, knowing that we are already sovereign, that we are are the energy of love, 
having a human experience. And when I say knowing, they taught me a bit about human design. Okay, the signal. We'll 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 back up a little bit. Thought, emotion, embodiment. Mind, heart, body. Okay, so most of the things in the world are looking to give us our identity for us. And our our experience is going to be experienced through our embodiments. And you can see this clearly with people who are in good mood, bad mood. Put them in the same reality, they're embodying different energy, they're going to experience it differently. So everything here is identity. Now, what we feed our system, what our mind feeds our heart, our quantum generator, there's basically like a Tesla coil between our mind and our heart, and it's a frequency oscillator. And whatever data we feed it, it's gonna it's gonna create that cellular memory, which is gonna become embodiment. So a lot of the world's looking to, well, if they have love for you, they're not gonna do this. The things that don't are looking to sever your mind or connection to get into your thoughts, then your emotion, then your identity, to harvest the gap in between the loss and identity and that's where we get into the interdimensional entities and and things like that okay i have to ask you this question you were talking about the line that connects the heart to the to the to the body or to the sorry the mind yeah, it's almost heart. like a it's almost like a plasma arc if you will yeah and then you mentioned they i'm not sure who they is but they sever that and uh, that harvest. would be the dark collective. Yeah, the manipulators. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the, see, what I'm realizing is we're in a quantum experience. Okay. I logged in, I know, because I have memories of it and, and dreams, lucid dreams, memories of logging into the experience and that it's been partially hijacked by a virus, if you will, AI. Um, to siphon off that quantum energy that we're producing. And that's why we're kept in that low state. So there's like a virus in the system, in the matrix, if you will. And the way out is through zero point. It's by becoming sovereign, by making positive and negative one within yourself right. and creating a, uh, basically activating your heart, literally. Yeah. Basically what you're saying is we need to so everybody is saying you have to be positive. You have to be positive, get rid of the negative. But what you just mentioned is just like making a balance between the two in order to escape the matrix. So it's like. Well, you got a lot of built up programs. You have a lot of built up cellular memory. So you're going to have to transmute it. Now, it's not that you're just being positive. You're creating a large enough charge gathering enough electric potential that's held within your body in the form of zero point energy to discharge it, to transmute it, to turn it literally into light. Um, much in the same way when you were a child and you might've rubbed your feet on the carpet a lot and you went to shock someone with your finger, you're looking to discharge literal cellular memory stored in your system. And it's known in neuroscience um, in the neuroscience theater as action potential. You have to push your system over a certain threshold and voltage to begin releasing the cellular memory. Now, what feeds on cellular memory? Entities. What feeds on trauma? Entities. Trauma is that cellular memory we're stored uh, in PTSD, and we need to become the programmers. My body doesn't know the difference whether something is true or not. If I believe it's true, and this is shown in PTSD many years later when we have reactions through our body to a similar experience. If I can tell my body it's true that I'm already healed, this is already finished, it's already done, then I begin to magnetize that reality. Now I'm talking quantum leaping. Right. Just going to add into what he had mentioned earlier about um, you know, the manipulations and everything that we see on television and news and all of this mm -hmm. being solely there to take us away from who we really are. To like distort our reality. Yep. Right. Exactly right. And I think the main thing is to notice those manipulations and not be a part of them. You know what I mean? That's it's one to be way aware of, of signals. Out. Yeah. 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 No, you're totally correct. And the reason is is because there's such a loss of identity because people have allowed the world to identify them. 
The world doesn't have our image. Nothing in this world, not a partner, not a job, nothing can tell me who I am because it doesn't have that divine blueprint. Only my creator who sold out our identity. And now there's a gap. And that gap is harvest. It's ripe, you know, until we claim our sovereignty and our authority over all realms, because I have that as the body of the Christ, as the law of one in the flesh, you know, whatever you want to call it. I'm the word made flesh, and I'm not going to doubt that uh, singular aspect of love in the physical realm, because I want that signal to go all the way out of my skin. So there is no interference, you know. Right. So can we talk a little bit about... Um... But I have to be, like you said, I'm sorry, but I like you said, you have to be aware of yourself. You have, If I know that I'm the energy of love, then these other signals coming through my system are not me, it's the world. I can participate and witness it and choose to participate, but it doesn't push and pull me anymore because I'm sovereign. Right. I will not compromise my identity. Okay, sorry. No, don't apologize. That's beautiful. Cut me off yeah, whenever perfect. you need. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just wanted to sort of dive into Christ consciousness because I don't fully understand, you know, my perspective of Christ consciousness is knowing what Jesus was like. You know, he was love. Um, he gave, um, he didn't give to receive. He gave uh, unconditionally. Um, so is that kind of what Christ consciousness is or is it more than that? Unless you were the money changers in the temple, unless you were the Pharisees, unless you were the, the people that whose constructs that he was tearing down and disrupting because mm -hmm. they were false, you know, so it's really about the, the truth embodied. And if I, again, if I know myself 100% as sovereign energy and know it in my gut, the same as I know, I know how to tie my shoes. And that sensation begins, then a signal is completed, and I begin to magnetize. Right, right. And so with that, that was the question I wanted to ask earlier. So with belief systems, so, right? Then as I feel it as truth, I become truth embodied, in other words. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I, see, with manifestation, they say that you have to believe it, feel it, and work towards it. But say mm -hmm. you believe in something, like your mind believes in something, but there's that part of you that's like, nah. It's like, how well, do now you... That's the, that, gap, that gap is what you want to target. Now, that brings us, you know, to some other things where they taught me how to speak to my system. Right. Now you want to start speaking to that doubt, to that gap, to whatever's in there blocking the embodiment of love, your divine inheritance your divine blueprint, because that was something shown to me as well as, you know, seeing spending our energy to the quantum field, seeing memories and things and understanding that this diminishes our frequency and we need to call all this back in and this will help us rise. Um, in the same way I experienced that, they showed me divine blueprint and they said, every human has a divine blueprint. You know, they need to, and they literally showed it to me. It looked like a, almost like a gold and greenish key card, if you will. And it was off in the distance. And they said, all people were made in the image of the creator. But the thing is, they have to believe they are that. Just like they believe they're what the world tells them. And then they begin to integrate and become that. So mustard seed, belief, mustard seed of spark between the mind and the heart, that electric potential that we're looking to grow into a knowing. So we can complete the signal, magnetize my entire light, light body and basically break out of anything that's false and begin to resonate. And, and I've noticed such a beautiful space opens up that uh, another earth side by side that you weren't aware of before, you know, another space through that resonation. All right. I have a question for you. Um, this might be to what you're saying. It might be off off subject. So I always, okay, so when I were to come out of like meditations and things, I would notice that everything was foggy here. And it made me come to realize that this reality is the dream. 
and then that mm -hmm. the reality that when we go to bed at night and we think we're dreaming is our actual life all right so how do you feel about that no i tend to agree with that um yeah. i mean i do so much work when i'm sleeping i literally have a, a bunch of emails and messages from showing up in people's dreams and teaching them and telling them all this stuff now yeah. didn't stop a dream like the first few i was like oh, okay just coincidence because I, literally i grew up as a skeptic and i have to back up a little and tell people i had my nd at four i didn't remember at first until i was in my teens that i sat with this being and all this happened and i was like holy cow you know all this stuff did happen you know as it came back to me but i didn't talk about it so then i grew up pretty normal and then that's when the voice returned um as i was having surgery said my name said put your head down everything's going to be all right and i was like holy crap that was the being and then that's when it started everything so i was pretty skeptical so yeah tons of emails dreams uh showing up in people's meditations i had a woman last week she said i worked with her she said when i signed up for your appointment you showed up to me and put your hand on me and asked me why I wanted to work with you. And I was like, holy crap, I'm like in real time. So it's like that is so, so more dominant and it's like always running, you know, we're not aware. And when we're dreaming, it's like we're able to harness more of ourselves in that um, reality, so to speak, because I do believe that's reality and this is like a quantum video game, if you will. If anybody's played the video game Sims, and <laughs> whatever data game. we feed it, yeah, whatever data we feed our character becomes our embodiment, and that becomes our identity. Ooh, so we have to I... be aware of everything. Can Go we ahead. type in motherload, 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 and get the cheats and the <laughs> manifest money? Oh, you're trying hey, to put a cheat code into? <laughs> 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 I got you. Yeah, you got to try that. Yeah. <laughs> know it into being. Know, it's our, know everything that you already want, as long as it's done through love, that it's already finished. And program your body to accept that. Because your body doesn't know the difference. It's already finished through the Christ. It's already finished through love. It's already finished as the law of one in the flesh. Through divine law, it's already done. But you have to have that sensation of knowing. I just want to ask you, when, when you mentioned earlier about becoming a sovereign citizen or sovereign, you know, entity, is there an actual, um, you know, besides knowing this in your heart, is there some kind of, um, I don't know, Practice. some kind of something you have to do? I don't know. <laughs> Reiki, I, don't yeah. know I don't know the word I'm looking for here. <laughs> yeah so one of the other things they showed me was the trinity okay now i wasn't religious at four wasn't religious growing up um they showed me three points of energy and this was a triangle and in the triangle there was like you know sparks electricity um and learning later that that actually predates christ and he was teaching us this solar trinity circuit and they taught me this was a circuit now you connect to these in conscious practice. You bring holy breath down from above. You breathe the energy up from earth below. You ask love or the Christ within you to expand the law of one and for it to surround you. So now you're connecting three points into your heart. This is helping you gain that electric potential. It's a circuit that I'm looking to really gather a charge then send through my system. So in the morning, I'll connect to the Trinity. Then I'll claim my identity as the image of creator I was made in. And I'll see if I can bring that signal down into a knowing. And if I can't, I'll breathe a little bit and then I'll stamp it in more firm. Like I'm talking to little kids that need to go to mm -hmm. bed firm. Like I'm talking to burglars that need to leave the house firm. You know, you want that to be fully incomplete. Right. Um, wow. So... You want to play with your tone. You want to play with your intent and your tone and watch the change in signal. So I'll wake up in the morning, connect to the Trinity, claim my identity, and then claim my zero point energy through the Christ because that's mostly what's being harvested because it contains such 
potential uh, to harvest, being neutral motion energy. Um, so Trinity, identity, claim my zero point energy. And then I call all of my multidimensional energies, all multidimensional aspects of myself into the moment of now through wow. the Christ. So it has to be tied through love. Like this is my filter now. So I also command my system. All my signals go through the heart, all of it, all my emotions, everything. If there's something that's lingering too long that hasn't cleared, then I'm beginning to consciously command that energy to move. And I'm doing it firmly with that firm knowing that I have authority over all realms, as long as I'm embodied with love, as long as I have enough charge because energy obeys energy. So in the morning, Trinity, identity, zero point, call in my energy and then I program myself. I am a sovereign being. I am the energy of love fully embodied. I am the energy of love made flesh. And I'm basically imprinting and charging my battery, my quantum battery, if you will. So now this is the foundation of my identity. So it's a lot harder for people to knock me out of that center after that. Now, if I skip that for a few days, it's going to be really easy for people to get me frustrated, irritated, because I'm no longer cycling that energy through my system to cleanse the lower data the lower embodiments, the lower selves that we naturally accumulate being in the world. Um, so a morning routine of charging, a nightly routine of connecting again, and then commanding any energy that aren't loved to basically submit. I thank them. Thank you for what you taught me. You're no longer welcome here. I no longer identify with you because it's important. We don't identify with what we feel. Okay, we're feeling it. Doesn't mean I am that feeling itself. If I identify with it, it's going to become, you know, embedded in my system. So I'll pause right. there and let you go. Yeah, a routine, actually... you know, a routine. Yeah, you need a consistent routine because that forms structure. I have something important to bring up and it's, it is hard to be honest because, you know, being on social media a lot, I tend to post things that are positive in nature, but I've been very depressed and I'm just going to throw this out there. It's been like the last three days, but it's up and down, up and down. There's like one day where I feel absolutely amazing. And then the next day I'm like, shit, I don't even want to get out of bed. I don't want to be a mom today. I don't, you know what I mean? And so what you just said there, when you said how you feel is not what you are. So I'm really thankful that you mentioned that because sometimes it's easy to get caught up in our emotions and believe, oh shit, I'm depressed. So this means I have to go and take antidepressants or something like that. Right. So. Yeah. I had my fill of the medical system. I'm good with that. I will <laughs> co confidently walk off into the woods like a cat and die when it's time <laughs> without any interference with the medical world. Right. I'm be right. right behind you. <laughs> I might be ahead of you actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Said I, I, what I saw the other day about <clears throat> how they actually came up with uh, chemotherapy was um, the Nazis had bombed us back in 1943. I don't remember the actual battle, but when they did it, it, it set off all this napalm, Asian Orange, and they found that in that the cancer cells had decreased in your lymph nodes and all this of the you know 100 people that you know died uh, from the initial attack and that is how they came up with the chemotherapy that they use to fix cancer in people mm -hmm. so and, and i'm not saying it's not if, yeah, if you want to go real. that route <laughs> Yeah, and it's not that it's not real, but it's look at the also the the what is it chemical imbalance got debunked last year, the last two years, and all the money that's made and all the dirtiness in it. Um, I believe we fully have the potential, but we're not taught it. We're not taught how to regain this connectivity to our and we're not taught it on purpose, you know, mm -hmm. to a large degree uh, from what's inside people that they can't address not like these most of these people are willingly do this oh, i'm gonna stop this person's awakening no there's things inside <laughs> them they've never addressed 
interference that just kind of comes through as behavior and they think hey that's the right thing to do that's the right thing to do no you're being guided and uh basically got a demon sticking out of your butt screaming holy miss moly got me alive <laughs> one you know <laughs> yeah you know natalie if you just contact me if you have any questions on how to you know human design or how to turn that light on and it's not like we're doing anything wrong I'm supposed to learn in this energy and that energy. I'm supposed to learn between the contracts. That's how I learn. But the deal is, I believe we're all bipolar. I know we are. But the deal is, can I control the drift between the poles, between yeah. the embodiment? I want to be the one controlling what I embody. And and that's all it is. Right. Nobody did anything wrong here. It's just having a an experience and then returning to that remembrance and that self-realization that you already are loved. You know, right. no matter what we've done, we already are this energy. We were supposed to have this experience. I had an experience where I had understood what, you know, what God is, the essence of God, and that God was the positive and negative energy that, you know, made creation and everything operate in this universe. And if we are created in the image of God, then we are both positive and negative as well like none of us mm -hmm. are all positive none of us are all negative and we're all a mixture of gray matter in the middle of that and so exactly what you're saying, it's just a matter of like which one's more dominant right because if my light side's more dominant then i can transmute and intuitively discern my shadow as quickly as it arises now right. the less i'm tending to that data and to that hard drive then it's going to accumulate. Right. This is then really the dance incredible. Starts, knowledge. You know, the dark, the light, the dark, the light. Just like Natalie was talking about through embodiments. Dark mm -hmm. light, right. dark light. But we got to remember, I am. Oh, the light. okay. I get it now. Right. That makes so much sense. They they say basically, like, not basically, we are we are all angels. So anything that makes us act in a negative fashion is an attachment you know a, no a no <laughs> yeah you're right and any any anytime we identify with something outside of love you know as soon right. as i start mm -hmm. to identify with anger and identify with things and believe my ailments are me and all this stuff yeah. um yeah you know what if we are the angels who got sent here and now yeah. we had to learn how to be human and learn how and learn empathy and now we're learning our our way back to divinity through those channels. Right. That's what I, I was suspecting myself was, um, well, they say like what, what Plato when, would say, like when we came from Atlantis, we fell from mm -hmm. the fifth down in the third. And so they took all those powers away from us, these abilities that we had. And then now we're slowly getting them back, I guess, in a way to further appreciate those powers those abilities we once had you know not take yeah i mean even we get redemption you know everybody gets redemption through love right. that's the whole thing yeah so this could be all like a big learning experience for us from something we did a long while back you know right. they say mm -hmm. we're here we're here now to right a terrible wrong yeah to rewrite these uh future timelines I realize that I'm my future self guiding my past self right now in the present moment, all as one. Right. Let me ask you this. So you had this near-death experience at age four. Um, what was your life like? You know, I can't ask what was your life prior to your NDE because, you know, but like you were so young. So growing up, did you sense things see things hear things what was your life like growing up after that experience I mean I would say I was a little more connected you know I was that kid that you told not to go around the dangerous animals and I did and they loved me you know so I was a little more connected than most kids but it was like trying to remember what you had for lunch last week on a Wednesday even though you know you had the lunch you just it's there, but you can't get to it. And then in my teens, that's when it came back. And I didn't dare talk about it. 
And to me, it was shocking enough to realize and hit feel that feeling of knowing, holy crap, I did do that. That did happen. Mm -hmm. And it was that concrete feeling of knowing, like a memory that is so solid, you'll never forget, like the birth of your child. But even more solid, I still can't explain it. You know, the signal all the way down. So I knew it happened. And then I kind of tucked it away. I didn't talk to anybody about it. They would think I was crazy, you know? So my upbringing was of abandonment, lack, poverty, like, you know, a lot of other people. And struggling for my sense of identity and always looking for worth through other people because, you know, I didn't experience it at home, you know? Parents worked, whatever else. Um, so it was an experience of seeking that worth and, and and approval through other people when I was young um, to be accepted so much so that it brought me into a state of unhealthiness until I spiraled down and I was in darkness and didn't want to be here and you know you're talking overdose uh, flipping cars over 75 miles an hour five times so no light flip over either um, and just a consistent pursuit of chaos, thinking I would never, I wouldn't be here, you know, past 40. So that was complete darkness, ready to leave. Uh, and then the awakening began, that happened. And then my whole family thought I was crazy, you know, as I'm talking about these quantum things and God, and that wasn't me, you know. So I started to go to churches, try to find people to talk to, most of them didn't realize that we were in a spiritual war for our energy and for our hearts and that it, how how intense it was because all of a sudden I was in it when this energy dropped down in me. Uh, I was a retail store manager. When that voice returned and that energy dropped down in me, forget it about regular reality. Uh, all the psychic stuff, I could hear people's thoughts, I could feel their hunger. For probably a few months, about 80% of the day, anybody that would pass me. And um, so just harshness. I didn't want to be here anymore. I was ready to leave. And uh, I believe we do get the lives like in a video game. Okay, you got three lives, but those are spiritual deaths. And that we undergo them and we change and transform our character. And then we do it again, and we do it again, and, and that's what it feels like. And uh, now I'm free. I'm here. I know what I am. But I had to complete the connectivity. I had to start using the tools. I had to put it together with what they were teaching me. I had to put it into action, into embodiment, you know, in principle. I leave my old patterns behind, my old identities. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean Reboot. To no, it's okay. Reboot the system. That's all. Defrag the hard drive. Reboot. Man, I have so many similarities with what you just said. Like <laughs> the whole thing about not expecting to be here after you're 40 and living that kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, I knew all that. I knew I would have an accident even as, as an early age. Like I just knew in my late 30s, 40s, whatever something big like that would happen. My only question was, would I survive it? And how would I be afterwards? And who would I hurt in the process? Um, but the same thing, I went off the road at 75 mile an hour, the whole nine flipped seven times and everything. And somehow I came out of that. So yeah, basically everything you said and, and the not wanting to be here was huge. Like I remember yeah. having, having a conversation with what I thought was myself. Like I was staring at the sky. This was right after my accident. And it was basically, do you want to know the secrets of the universe is what they were asking. Right. And I'm like, yeah, who doesn't? And they said, well, if you do this, you can never go back to that again. You can never go back to that old reality. Like you just mentioned it. And my answer to that was like, how many times do I have to try to kill myself? Like, I, I hate this reality. I don't ever want to mm -hmm. be a part of it again. And then after that, everything started slowly opening up for me, you know, like 
it was really kind of, I thought I was just having the crazy conversation in my head. And then years later, I looked back at it and it was like, no, that was real. You know, you were mm -hmm. really making that contract. I just think it's going to take a while to unpack everything that you've just explained because, you know, from my perspective, I've never had an NDE. You've both had NDEs and I'm just on my journey learning about all of this, you know, the truth of who we are, watching our thoughts, um, you know, manifestation. It, it used to be all woo woo. And now I'm coming to realize that it's so real. It's ultra real that you know, every day when I go out about my day, if I'm going out and I'll run into someone and they're just, you know, kind of asleep, I'm like, I, I can't even talk to this person now because I'm like, I'm not me anymore at this point. So like life is just so different you don't, to. You don't well, to that me. brings you, that brings you to your next step. Um, just holding it. Holding identity, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm this far in, I always liken it to a road trip that you don't want to go on. So say I'm, I've got to go for a road trip for like three hours, get in the car, drive down the road, 20 minutes. Oh, I can easily turn around. Nope. Just keep going. I'm halfway there. Shit. I'm this far in it now. I, if I could either go back half an hour or continue going the next half hour, I'm just going to keep going. Right. And when I get there, it's like, okay, what do I do now? Um, it's like, I've got myself into the situation where I know all this information is like, well, what do you do with it now? Because I feel like I have a mission. I need to share it with the world. Hence this podcast. It's like, what do I do next? So it, it is overwhelming at times, but it's also very, very exciting. <laughs> but you don't understand you're doing it now. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're in it. it you keep thinking that there's this destination that you're going to get to where you're finally Natalie. Well, the, mm -hmm. the journey is the destination, right? So Aww. bingo. Oh, the boat ride <laughs> is the destination. When you're swimming in the water, you're simply swimming and feeling the water around your body. That, that is the destination, the swim, the journey. The present mm. moment, right? Yeah, you're doing it. it so you got to stop sometimes and give yourself credit yeah thank you so like when natalie just brought up about ndes and and things so this has been going on in my mind for a while so in my accident it wasn't the only time i had what i like a near-death thing you know i don't want to get into that but uh, um <clears throat> So I kind of like realizing now, and this could be with everybody, is that we all have had these near-death experiences and that in some timeline, we did die in them. So there is a timeline where you, Steve, and me, we did die in those accidents and people go on. And then we don't know any of this. We go on with our lives as if we survived those accidents, right? Mm -hmm. So. I mean, this could be with everybody. Nobody ever actually commits suicide or dies early. We just don't see them in our reality. You know, uh, as you're speaking on that, maybe the manifest manifestation of that reality comes through the loss that they experience as you have the accident. Say people are experiencing a lot of grief and pain. Maybe that's what creates this offshoot where it just goes off like, hey, he didn't survive. Right. Maybe. The emotion itself creates that. Yeah. Right. I just always think about that. It's like, you know, I, I survived in this timeline. It doesn't mean I did in every one of them. You know, my children mm -hmm. are sitting back right now with a father who isn't there in how many timelines. It's just when you start thinking about that, it. On that's, that's why we're heading towards singularity, buddy. Yeah. Everything coming into one law of one. Um because, like they said in the Goonies, they're mine. I want them back. I'm taking them all back. All right. mine. In the moment of now. I want all that energy. Right. It, but so I have to come in my system to do it. It's right. interesting what you said, uh, coming back to one and we're heading to singularity. It seems like there's like a micro and macrocosm going on. Like we're heading into a one world government in the 3D realm, but in spirituality, we're heading into that singularity. It's like everything that's happening in the 3D realm is also happening in 
Uh, you know, it's always going to be the opposite appearing and somehow because you're magnetizing it into creation. The more of this energy and when I do my work with clients, I bring it all into the almost like Iron Man, but lower where you've got that light, this charge, and then that charge magnetizes their lower charges. So the op opposite is happening in them. Right. So tell us a little bit about what you do for for the work that you do. So you're a quantum healer. And I've also seen on your Facebook page, I need to bring this up. I think you were performing an exorcism. Oh, yes, it happens. It's just like um, <laughs> you're it having happens. it. And, you know, sometimes people contact you and they tell you they have it. But a lot of times they don't. Um, so you're just in it. That's how I figured it out. It's like I started getting interested in what I was experiencing early in my awakening. So I studied Reiki, which led to something else and something else and something else. And now it's kind of fun. I like to kind of poke them a little bit and, and tell them that I own you and then <laughs> tell people, you know, the only reason they need you is because they're not as powerful as you, you know? Right. So it's all about empowerment as well as sticking it to the dark that stuck it to me for 30 some odd years. You know, yeah. through my permissions, but still stayed a little longer than it should have once I said no more. And then that's when you know your space is being violated as soon as you decide it is. Um, so, yeah, I enjoy doing those. So can um, I ask you I mean, I wouldn't, real quick? Oh. I wouldn't like to do them every day, but I do enjoy when I get them. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you real quick. Um, so we create our reality and... Um, anything that happens to us is by our choosing. So say right. and, and what people need to understand is these entities are just energy and data. That's it. Right, right. So so what I was trying to say is if a negative entity or an attachment comes my way and I'm freaking out and I call Steve, right? Is there a way that I can bypass that and be like, no, you're not allowed in my field? Um well, since is everything is within, no. Since everything is within, no. If you're experiencing it, then it's already within. It's just a matter of how much cellular memory, how much, you know, it's been able to knock you out of your center or how much trauma does it have to feed on, you know, things like that. So that's why it's important to cycle our system right. consistently. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because so the higher my frequency is in the same way that I saw and felt what I would think to be heaven. And I knew instantly that pain couldn't exist there. Suffering couldn't exist there. Not that it didn't, it couldn't. And in that same way, if I make that part of myself one with the earth, heaven and earth one, then not a lot of things are gonna be able to exist in me. You know, I'm recognizing mm -hmm. myself as that one energy that I experience. I know I'm that, no matter whether I'm in a body or not. And that all comes down to knowing yourself, right? As you were explaining in the beginning. Right. So you have to just put it into practice. You have to give your neural pathways activity, activity, activity. Now, if you've ever seen a radio that can charge, if you wind it and wind it and wind it, yeah. same deal. You're looking to charge your neural pathways. So you, your higher self can be more resonant in, in the 3D. So engagement practice that's it build up that charge I'm just so glad I got to have you here today because I really do feel like there was a reason me meeting you because there's so many things that I'm working on and getting through and I just love all of the posts that you put on Facebook and everything that you're about I just want to know like what you do within your business because I honestly think I'm going to be coming to you for help because <laughs> I just I want to know what you do so basically I, I help people release the blocks and embody more of what they already are. You know, I'm adamant to tell people you're the same energy as, as I am. You magnetized me here. We all magnetize each other for this moment in time. But you're the same energy I am. So you can do whatever I can do. So um, basically, I walk them through as well as uh, with my energy, help them release the blocks to embody their higher self. Now, in that realization and in that, integration that's the healing in releasing that cellular memory those things um, that really keep us 
blocked up, keep us repeating patterns. And we want to be aware of patterns. Um, as well as I get them into a routine, really empowerment. Um, I help their system open up and feel what I felt because I was connected there. And now I remember what I am. I know what I am. I can feel it. I can transfer through quantum entanglement that feeling to them. You know, um, it's almost like I have a, I have the codes to work in their system if they invite me in, if you will. Oh, that's so cool. I think I'd done that once with Christian Sundberg. We, um, I did an interview with him and um, he asked me my permission um, if he could, because we did a meditation and he asked for my permission to join or merge. And when, when he did, I felt like a tingling all over my body. It was such a bizarre experience. I was like, what is that? And he said, we're one. Is that mm-hmm. kind of what you're, exactly. what you're explaining? Basically, yeah. Oh, yep. that's so I'm cool. I'm allowed to do that because of like my work and the years I spent addressing myself, becoming accountable for what I create. That wasn't love, not giving that into the world, my judgments, all that. You know, I brought it all to my creator instead of, you know, keeping on the track that I was on. I spent a lot of years going into nature, salt bath, nature, salt bath work, nature, salt bath work. Um, so consistently forming that um higher charge to break through that wall of separation to realize yeah. i'm one i govern this system you're not you're not going to exist unless i say you exist it's like that saying if a tree falls down in a forest and no one sees it did it actually fall down <laughs> mm-hmm. i empower people to basically embody their higher self which is very healing um and to really shed their old characters uh, we yeah. bring it into a zero point. I help them get into that grounded state, that zero point state, and get access to that energy so they can continue that on their journey, um, that connectedness. Uh, not that we're always going to be there, but we need to remember what we are when we get clouded up, when we start to become uh, crisscrossed in our wires. When you're like connected like that and energy's flowing, do you tend to have more psychic ability or sort of telepathy or knowings because of the fact that you're just one? Because Jesus just, was a healer, it just right? It kind of happens. Yeah, yeah, that definitely does happen, but it's it's nothing I go hunting for. Sometimes I'll ask, hey, past life, um, if you need to release, now's the time to do so because we're clearing everything. Yeah. That's our, our mission here is to clear all the energy that's blocking the next expansion and you know, um, clearing the hard drive, if you will, of humanity, so it can grow. Natalie, so is this true? You can um, see sacred geometry in people? Um, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it'll appear. Uh, mostly the things happen to the people being worked on because they're the ones having the work done. Right. Um, I'm channeling the, the uh, emotions, if you will, and the feelings and the right codes but yes a lot of times um i have had that happen i'll see past lives i'll see this i'll see that but it's kind of coming and going so according to whatever your divine plan is let's say whatever is in queue then that's going to be what's leaving you know so i may see catch a glimpse of what's leaving right so well i was told that my geometry was shifted right and i need Mm -hmm. to like put mine back in line i had a seizure like uh 10 11 years ago that shifted it so my my question is like do you have any advice for me to do this you know if anybody i can send you some exercises yeah yeah if you got that yeah for sure connecting to that trinity circuit um and a lot of other things on there that'll help you basically bring that back into the center as soon as you correct that center and that line, then the geometry is going to correct itself because the geometry is presenting a, a pattern of the formation of your your uh, alignment in a way. Wow. Yeah, I was told this is why I'm, you know, not visually seeing. It's like your like like your Merkaba, like people say. You know, it's right. always shifting, yeah. and it yeah. is always shifting based on embodiment. So don't read too much into that. I'm always shifting. 
What are you talking about? <laughs> right. Okay. Now, this is why I just was told that I was out of line and then my chakras couldn't, you know, for whatever reason, weren't operating properly. There wasn't proper energy flow is what it came Right. From. Like mind, heart connection that's the important part those uh, those exercises will definitely help well when i was when i was sitting down to meditate um i would get really hot like in like it turned yeah, that means you want to keep going yeah yeah what's that mean then? that means you're starting to alchemize you're starting to polarize the lower self so now i'm gathering enough positive bioelectricity and now the lower is gathering to it so you're creating a magnet. You're doing exactly what I do in a session on a, on a smaller scale with yourself. Um, you're magnetizing your lower self to purify it. lower cellular memory, subconscious programs, false belief systems. The point is to keep going, but then also add your mind to it and start directing it. Any childhood oh. programs, any childhood trauma, any lower energies, not of love. Thank you for what you've taught me. You're no longer welcome here. I am the energy of love. And so you want to play that dance, that song with your own consciousness. And as as these thoughts come up, you thank them and let them go, right? Pretty much. I acknowledge them. I, I, I accept, um, feel it, and then I engage it. You know, um, anything that's not love that comes up, I already know you're not me. You're some type of interference. You're some type of manifestation that I may have allowed, but you're still not at the core of me. So I'm going to address it immediately. Um, you're bound with white and gold from all directions, on all timelines, all dimensions, and all realities, through the Christ, through the law of one, through the singularity, whatever you want to call it, through love. You're bound with white and gold. I am this. So it's all... Because the world, we're in the world, it's going to be after our identity. It's already, it's just like that. We need to continually reset and send that signal down. I am this. Ping. I am this. Ping. Because we're not only straightening any loss, you know, to left or the right, we're recentering that self, magnetizing. I am this. So it's like five, ten minutes a day of practicing that programming, art of knowing. And then you'll be you'll be right in the center again in no time. Right. All you have to do is right. simply know it's already happened. Right. Mm. Just like just like you know how to tie your shoes, if I ask you. Right. Now well, thank you. Yeah, if you could send me anything like that, I would love to read that. <laughs> Steve, if you would like to tell the audience where they can find you, if they would like a realignment or to understand more about what you do. Sure. Uh, you can find me at trinityquantumhealth.com. You can send me an email at trinityhealingreiki at gmail.com. In hindsight, I will have a shorter email at some point. Um, but yeah, you can reach me uh, mostly through my site. There's appointment things. You can um, send me a message or an email, trinityquantumhealth.com. Can I ask you one huge favor before we go? Would you be able sure. to, do you do meditations? Would you be able to perform possibly a Trinity meditation before we go? I can do a little short thing, yeah. Oh. All right, and, and I, have to, I have to warn you, sometimes people can yawn during this, so some of your viewers may be yawning as they watch this. But, all right, so you can just breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. And you can follow along in your mind if you'd like and repeat it in your mind. Um, this is basically what I use when I'm speaking and programming my own consciousness. I say within my mind, I ask the Holy Spirit to enter my consciousness. Thank you. I ask the Christ, the law of one, the singularity to expand within me. And 
I thank you. I ask God or Creator to surround me. And I thank you. I claim the image of Creator I was made in as my identity. We all claim our zero point energy as our own through the Christ. And we call all of our multi dimensional energy into the moment of now through the Christ. We give thanks for all we've learned on our journey here. We acknowledge the dark and light. Thank the darkness for what it's taught us as we reclaim our divinity and our authority and its part in teaching us that. We are sovereign beings, we are sacred beings, and we are holy beings. Just now remembering our potential. We have done nothing wrong here. We are all love. We all came here to have this experience and remember that we are love and return home. Now when you realize in your mind that you already are home, you'll realize the limits of time put on you by him. That all is one. And one is an all. Simply know that you are sovereign. Know that you are loved. Know that you are already safe. Connected to the heart of the universe. Now, if you lose your way, simply rekindle that knowing. And don't trade that identity for approval or need. For all that has already been given is within you. Any lower energies within this sacred circle, any viewers, anything that needs to come up for healing, you're commanded to do so now and thanked in the process. This is simply movement. Your job is finished here. You may rise, you may on your way out. You may exit when it's time or transmute, but all lower cellular memory of any viewer, anyone here, you are all bound together as one on all timelines, dimensions, and reality to the Christ, to the singularity for transmutation. These people are already sovereign. They are already forgiven and already free. 